Saquon Barkley, uh, according to, well, Saquon Barkley, is going to be skipping Giants training camp until he gets a new contract extension. And not extension. He's he's not officially signed the franchise tag uh, until he gets, obviously, the long-term deal that he wants. And he said verbatim, he said, I'm not looking to reset the market, so any reports that say that are false. I, that is not what I'm looking to do. And we'll see how that negotiation goes. This is a, we, we like to take sides on stuff. This is honest to God, a situation where I can see both sides of it. I've said for years on the show, for running backs, I totally get. That, that position, more than any position in the NFL, including quarterbacks, including quarterbacks who are obviously the most important position, I absolutely understand holding out, 100%. Uh, because running back is not only the one position where you get basically one big contract if you're good, but also, it's the last unprotected position in the NFL. You can't hit receivers the way you used to. You can't hit quarterbacks the way they used to. Heck, there's even rules protecting kickers and punters. Running backs, you can hit them however you want, as long as they're not a pass catcher. Now, if there's, you know, if, if, if it's an Alvin Kamara running a seam and a guy interferes with him, okay, that's different. But if you're talking just a simple goal line, eye form formation, just straight up the gut, like with Derrick Henry or Saquon Barkley or somebody, you can hit them however you want, head to head. You can take them out from their legs, how, however you want to do that. So I get Saquon doing that, and I get any star running back holding out for a contract. But I also very much get the front office for the New York Giants and any front office that's looking to potentially sign a star running back, or in the case of Saquon, a superstar running back to a long-term extension. Here's why. If you look at the last half decade plus, around five to eight years-ish, of star running backs that have gotten big contract extensions, not only does signing a running back sort of halt your window of Super Bowl contention, if you will, I would make a very strong case it significantly pushes you back. Look at Christian McCaffrey. Got that long extension, four years, $64 million contract extension by the Carolina Panthers. Two years later, they traded him. Christian McCaffrey wasn't contributing to winning in Carolina because why? They didn't have a quarterback. Ezekiel Elliott released three years after he signed a six-year, $90 million contract extension. Le'Veon Bell released one year after he signed a four-year, $52.5 million contract. Alvin Kamara, production has plummeted significantly since he signed a five-year, $75 million contract extension. Dalvin Cook, we just saw recently, released three years after signing a five-year, $63 million contract extension. Vikings looking at it and say, yeah, Dalvin averages 4.7 yards a carry, but we've also got this kid, uh, Alexander Madison, who averages like 4.1, and we're paying him way less. Let's go with him and save a ton of cap space. David Johnson, remember David Johnson? He was a fantasy darling back in the day. Traded a year and a half after signing a three-year, $39 million contract extension. And you, folks would argue, well, what about Derrick Henry? He's still one of the best running backs of the league. Agreed. Can you tell me how many playoff games the Titans have won since they gave him a four-year, uh, yeah, four-year, uh, $50 million contract extension? Please. So, so, got to the playoffs in 2020, lost to Baltimore. Got there in 2021 with Derrick Henry missing nine games. Didn't matter. Running backs do not, star running backs do not directly equate to winning the way they used to. I use the Kansas City Chiefs as an example. Heck, I use the Dallas Cowboys as an example. Yes, Tony Pollard has elevated into a star back, but he wasn't necessarily that before. And there'd be games Zeke would miss. Dallas's offense was fine. They'd still run the ball effectively with Pollard. They didn't need necessarily uh, uh, the running game from Zeke specifically to get the production they wanted out of Dak, out of the offensive line, out of the weapons. So I get Saquon holding out 100%, but the the notion that the Giants have to pay him, not really. Now, do I? does it make any sense whatsoever that they gave Daniel Jones the contract extension they gave him? No. I didn't know 15 touchdown passes could get you a, a, basically a, a four-year contract that's going to pay, pay uh, on average $40 million a year. Didn't know it gave you that. But, yeah, it's it's I don't get it. I, I don't get why the Giants would pay him. Now, if there was a team that maybe wanted to make a trade, franchise tag him, I consider it. But running backs do not equate to winning in 2023 in the NFL. Star running backs don't. As a matter of fact, when you pay them, they actually hold you back.
That's just what the data says. Don't get mad at me. Just get mad at what the contract's saying, what the data says. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube. Be sure to click that big red subscribe button and go check out the other clips and full shows of Carving It Up Live. Have a blessed day.